Hi. I wanted to discuss the differences between Christianity and Hebrew roots. Well, I'm Hebrew roots and I'm set apart. I know that Ruth and don't usually waste my time talking to Christians, but what did you want to know? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for all sinners and that we are saved by faith through the free gift of grace? Yes. Salvation is a free gift, but you have to work to keep it. If you are Hebrew roots, you must follow the laws of the Old Covenant, but only the ones you are comfortable with and that apply to you personally. However, if you are not Hebrew roots, then you must keep every jot and tittle of all the law or you will be the least in God's kingdom. But isn't the New Covenant command to express and show our love towards our neighbors the fulfillment of the law? Galatians 5.14 says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The translators of your Bible were idiots. I choose to ignore such verses. You must buy a Hebrew Roots Bible published by a Hebrew Roots company to get the real truth. Are you saying that all of those people who turned to Jesus Christ reading other versions of the Bible didn't have the truth? Were they saved even if they didn't observe the Hebrew festivals and follow all of the laws of Moses? John 1.17 says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na. I'm not listening to you. You're a pagan. You must believe as I do or you are a pagan and follower of the Pope. That's honestly not true. I am a follower of Jesus Christ and seek to do his will in my life. He is the living vine and I have been grafted into him and am one of his sheep. You pagan. Unless you have been grafted into Israel and follow the customs of Mosaic Judaism, you are not a child of God. You are a pagan. You follow Jesus, which is the name of a pagan god. There is no letter J in the original Hebrew. You must be Hebrew roots like me to be saved. I believe in the Son of God who was born of a virgin. He was a perfect man. He was the living word and the word made flesh who dwelt among us. He was Emmanuel which means God with us. I believe in the Savior Jesus Christ which is the English name for the Messiah. I am saved by grace. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na. That is a translation error. James says that faith without works is dead. That means that you must keep the feasts, refrain from eating pork, and sit at your computer on the Sabbath and argue with Christians. You are correct in reminding me of what James said. Faith without works is dead being alone but what kind of works was James talking about? Here's what James 2.14 through 17 actually says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. The works James is talking about is the manner by which we love our neighbors. Romans 13, 8 says, O oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. More mistranslations. You are a disobedient pagan if you don't observe the Feast of Trumpets or the Feast of Tabernacles. You must keep the Old Covenant regulations or God will beat you with a rod of iron. But the Bible tells us that we are under a new covenant and a new priesthood. We no longer have need of the Levitical mediators of the Old Covenant but have Jesus Christ as our one and only mediator between God and man. The Bible says that the veil was torn completely in two when Christ died and that we now have direct access to the Holy Spirit. The temple was destroyed and we, the followers of Christ, have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 8.13 says, In that he saith, A new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. And Matthew 27, 51 says, And, behold, 
The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And 2 Corinthians 3.14 says, But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil. Untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away in Christ. And 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God willeth in you. More pagan mistranslations. If you look up the root words you will find that the verses you quoted say just the opposite of how the pagan translators wrote them down. I'm done talking to you. If you won't do things my way then you're an idiot, a pagan, a laodicean, a racist, an anti-Semite, and a jerk. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I will certainly keep you in my prayers. I pray that the love, generosity, and joy of Jesus Christ fills your heart and soul and that you find peace someday. Have a blessed day. Yeah! Whatever.